This is me. Well, it was me until I got jacked. This is my buddy Robert. He wants to lose weight, so I'm going to help him. Join us on our journey, the road to getting jacked. All right, and here we go. For the past week, I've been asking you, my friends and family, what you want to know about nutrition. This is a bit painful to say, but there's a lot of just straight up bullshit out there when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to eating healthy. So much BS out there. There's just a lot of marketing stuff that's just straight up lies, deceit. Almond and golden honey. Honey Nut Crunch Roos are part of this complete breakfast. If you want Honey Nut Crunch Roos, I approve. Honey Deceitful, misleading, the way that food is prepared and packaged. Recognize these little yellow sponge cake? Hostess Twinkies. They're more than a snack, they are practically Tote, It's almost the evil, really. Not only am I gonna give you the tools to make better food choices, but I'm gonna teach you how to read a nutrition label so you can know what foods to put down and what foods to pick up. How you're gonna improve your diet by slowly and steadily replacing different foods in your diet. What a healthy meal actually looks like. What do you need to include in your diet? What are some things that you should probably cut out of your diet? How does alcohol, marijuana, and other things affect your body? Let's jump right in. So the first question I had was from my cousin Brittany. And it was, what is a macro and a micro? Macronutrients are big. When you think macros, there's four pillars to our nutrition. There's sugar. Oh, that's nice. Bread or carbs, carbohydrates, whatever you call it, fats or lipids, proteins, or <coughs> amino acids and alcohols. The basic overview of these, sugars and carbs have four calories per gram. Fats have nine calories per gram, it's very high. Protein, again, is four carbs per gram and alcohol is seven carbs per gram mm. okay now micronutrients are the smaller things in your diet like vitamins minerals calcium vitamin b12 vitamin c vitamin a d etc etc we are going to focus on macros if you're meeting your macros and you're getting a good balance of your macros, you're eating the right kinds of macros, which is basically just food, then you are going to meet your micros. We're talking about carbs. Carbs are actually essential to the way that your body works. Carbs are energy and your body needs energy to function. For example, your brain can only exclusively use glucose, which is sugar, for energy. There's a couple kind of different types of carbs. Let's break it down into two main groups. You have complex carbs and you have simple carbs. Now, simple carbs are just different kinds of sugar. Glucose, fructose, sucrose, blood sugar, fruit, and from like table sugar. You can see here that here is a, is a chemical diagram of what a sugar is. And when you have complex carbohydrates, it's, it's really just those simple carbs bound together in a chain. Now you might say to yourself, what does it matter? Well, it matters because when you have, when you consume complex carbohydrates, it takes time for your body to break those carbs down. And by breaking them down into energy, it raises and affects your blood sugar levels. So let's take a look at one of my favorite games over here, Skyrim. The little blue bar on the, on the left part of the screen is the mana. 
And mana is basically your magic energy. And in a game, we're probably all familiar with this, you have a stanima, stanima or something similar, is once you use up all of your energy, it will kind of come back slowly on its own, or you can drink a potion or something that will bring it back up. And if you drink too many potions in the game or whatever, nothing really happens, you're just basically wasting potions. Except in real life, it's a little bit different because you can go over your maximum capacity. So you have a sweet spot in your body for your gas tank, basically. And that's your blood sugar levels. And if you go way over that sort of sweet spot, that's when energy, primarily sugar or glucose, is converted into fat. So if you're trying to lose weight, or you're trying to maintain your weight, you're trying not to gain fat, what the best strategy is to maintain your blood sugar levels. The reason that matters is when we have the simple carbs, simple carbs are broken down almost right away. Since they're broken down right away, it affects our blood sugar levels very rapidly and it's going to shoot up very quickly, and then we're gonna have a very rapid release of insulin, which is going to absorb that blood sugar and bring it down really quickly. This is when you eat something sugary, such as a candy bar, a piece of white bread is also very sugary, white pasta, or refined grains. All of the extra, so anything over your energy bar or your sweet spot per se, is going straight to fat. Now there's a double whammy here. It is not only did you eat more sugar and it was broken down before you could even use it and then it was converted into fat, but also that sugar, since it was broken down so quickly, it actually empties your stomach out really fast which means you're gonna be hungry right away, you're gonna be tired right away, so you're eating these sugary foods. It's a cycle of death, really. You're eating sugary foods, your blood sugar skyrockets, then it plummets, and you're hungry, and you can go through this cycle over and over and over again. And every single time, you're not really using the energy in an efficient way because you're breaking it down too quickly for your body to actually use it. When you eat something like a complex carbohydrate, so that would be whole grain bread, whole grain, pro, whole grain, grain pasta, what's going to happen is your body is going to digest that a lot more slowly. Since the digestion process is slower, the food stays in your stomach for longer. You feel full for a longer amount of time and it affects your blood sugar much differently than something like eating a, a tablespoon of sugar, is it's going to be much more gentle on your blood sugar levels. And that's exactly what we want. The reason for that is it's going to stay, your blood sugar levels when you digest something like a complex carbohydrate, it's going to stay in the sweet spot. And you're gonna have more sustained energy for a longer amount of time. This is key. We got a lot of benefits here. One, when you eat something like whole grain bread, there's a lot more nutrients in the bread actually, like protein and vitamins and minerals. And two slices of whole grain bread is actually surprisingly a great source of protein, about as much as an egg. So you eat the food, you feel full longer, your blood sugar doesn't go outside of the sweet spot, so it starts converting that energy into fat, and you actually feel full, so you eat less. That's a lot of benefits. If you were gonna do one change right now in your diet, it would be to change from simple carbs, white bread, white pasta, to complex carbs, whole grain bread, whole grain pasta, and brown rice. Yes, it's not as sweet, but eventually you'll get used to the taste and it's way better for you. Let's go into protein. Now, protein is a very important 
part of our diet. Protein provides structure for our cells, so like your skin, your muscles, your, your, your face. These are proteins. And proteins are a, actually a combination of smaller elements, which are still proteins, they're amino acids. And there's a variety, I think there's 26 or 27 essential amino acids that your body needs to make actually a complete protein. What a lot of people get mixed up about protein is they're so hyper concerned <clears throat> about eating too much. And you had mentioned with protein powders that, that it's hard on your kidneys and it can cause kidney stones. Kidney stones wow. um, your kidneys are um, your kidneys filter your blood, and if there's excess of some of the types of breakdown products from protein, like purine, purine causes gout, which is deposits of crystals in your toes, painful, swollen red toes, and then they get gout because it was deposit of purine. The big protein supplements that a lot of weightlifters was doing was creatine, and it was putting them in kidney failure. Creatine. So creatine, same thing. Creatine now, is putting is, people in kidney failure. Some of the protein powders that were really high in creatine was putting guys into kidney failure. Wow. I'm saying that a better choice would be finding a balanced protein supplement. If you feel like you're not getting a protein in your diet with food, that you're getting a, one about, a balanced one that's not so high in creatine that it's hard on your kidneys. You're going to be able to use what's in your food much better if it's actually coming from the food. And so protein powder has a lot of stuff, protein in it, but it's gonna be harder for your body to digest things from supplements, from pills, like vitamin supplements, from, in all, in all honesty, just this nasty crap that we eat in desperation of trying to gain muscle. They are practically You don't need it. You really don't need it. It's fairly easy to get your regular amount of protein intake just by eating chicken, beef, eggs, much easier than you think. And the proteins that you get from eating chicken, eggs, and beef, fish, are more complete in a way that your body's gonna be able to use it. While it is important to eat enough protein, protein has like a hyper focus on it. Protein, the excess protein in your body gets broken down into carbohydrates. And that process is called ketosis. That, those ketones are actually what is so hard on your kidneys. Fats. Fat is a good way to store energy because it's nine calories per gram. So it's incredibly energy dense. The other thing about fats is you can one pound of fat is 3,000 calories. So if you're gonna start thinking about fat loss, start thinking in the terms of about 3,000. What a lot of people get wrong about fat is they think all fat is the same. There's actually quite a few different kinds of fat. There's saturated fat, there's hydrogenated oils, and then there's polyunsaturated fat and monounsaturated fat. That's kind of a lot. Let's keep things simple. Saturated fat and hydrogenated oils are going to be some of the worst fats for your body. Hydrogenated oil can cause inflammation. Saturated fat can affect your cholesterol in ways that you don't want it to. Whereas monounsaturated oils like olive oil, canola oil, and avocado oil I don't know if I have that right, are going to help your cholesterol. So they are fats, but they're going to do different things to your body. So if a fat is solid at room temperature, like butter or margarine, then those are the fats that you wanna eat less of. And if you can eat more oils, such as olive oil, canola oil, avocado oil, these are the fats that are gonna help your cholesterol. They're gonna help you feel a little bit more full throughout the day, and they're gonna add some taste to your food. If you are on a bulk and you're really trying to gain weight, 
These are the kinds of fats that you would want to include in your diet. Since fat has so many calories, if you're trying to reduce the amount of calories that you eat throughout the day, reducing the amount of fats that you eat is a great way to do it. When we use fat for energy, fat also goes through a process of being converted from fat into carbohydrates. So it's not totally inefficient. It's not totally efficient. It takes a while and you know, your body really has to work for it. And most of all, this process is slow. What people have a misconception about working out is they think that when they burn calories, they're burning fat. The best exercises for burning fat is to do a low intensity, ex a low intensity exercise like walking. Walking is one of the best ways to burn fat. When you burn calories, you're actually burning a reserve of carbohydrates that are stored inside your muscles and you're using the sugar that's inside your blood. So if you go out every day with just the mindset that you want to burn calories, you're going to do that. However, the calories that you're actually burning are the sugars inside your body and not the fats. And if you want to burn the fats inside your body, one of the best ways to do that is to one, not add to the amount of fats in your body and two, low intensity exercises like walking. Since that process of breaking down fat into carbohydrates is a very slow process. So work with how your body works and do your exercise slowly. There's one more thing that you need to know about burning calories and that's called your basic metabolic rate. You can think of this as your energy efficiency. So like in Skyrim, when your energy goes up over time, because you know, it's just how the game works. The opposite is true with our blood sugar levels and how we consume energy throughout the day. Just by existing, we're burning energy. So our, our levels are going down and we have to burn fat in order to compensate for that. By gaining muscle mass, you increase the rate of which you burn energy. This is good because you burn more calories by doing nothing. So one of the best strategies for burning fat is to increase your muscle mass. That's going to help you become more efficient at burning calories while you do nothing. So increase your muscle mass, change the kinds of foods that you eat to be more of a slow release, a steady release, so you don't add into your fat and do regular exercise to work off extra calories. An hour of walking a day is a very powerful way to burn fat and it can help you lose weight. It can help you lose the fat. You don't wanna do things like really high intensity cardio, such as long distance running, because the hormones that your body produces when you run long distance is going to reduce your muscle mass. And you don't want that. Alcohol. Alcohol is seven calories per gram. And there's something you need to know about alcohol. It's that it can't be converted directly into carbohydrates, which your body uses for energy. The thing about alcohol is that it's converted directly to fat. There, it doesn't go into your blood sugar. It doesn't go into your little energy sweet spot. It goes straight to fat. So every drink that you have is going straight to your ass. If you want to make an impact on things that are contributing to your body fat, alcohol is going to be potentially one of the things that you really need to look at. And let's do some math. So one of my buddies drinks four beers a day ish. He was, he quit drinking good on him. All right. My lunch just got here, which is going to be a great time for us to check things out. Let's say I drink four beers a day. A beer is anywhere about 200 calories, 200 calories per beer, four, beers a day, that means each day I'm drinking at least 800 calories. And let's just keep things simple. Let's say I had five beers in a day. That means in three days, I'm gonna have drank one pound of fat, the equivalent of one pound of fat. So if I'm drinking five beers a day, 
how long would it take me to lose 10 pounds of fat if all I did was quit drinking? In a month, I could lose 10 pounds of fat just by quitting drinking. And that's enormous. And you should do the same kind of math for sugary drinks like soda, um, maybe coffee if you're drinking like the Starbucks S Supreme Deluxe Sugar Monster House coffees. Those can really add a lot of calories to your day. There's one thing I didn't talk about and that's how alcohol can affect your hormone lever levels. Alcohol needs to be processed in the liver. And what is what is alcohol going to be doing to maybe testosterone? Is that going to affect testosterone levels? Because it can affect the liver and that's where sterols are made and sex hormones like estrogen and testosterone are um, obviously you, you think of them being made in the testicles or the ovaries, but the sterols come from the list uh, the, from the liver. And so um, people who indulge too much in alcohol, it can lower their, their testosterone levels. All right. That is the biggest part. We have carbohydrates. The most important thing to take away from carbohydrates is we want to focus on complex carbs. And if we can't get complex carbs, then a starch like rice or potatoes is going to be a better choice than simple carbs such as white bread. Then we have proteins. Skip the protein powder. Stick to eating enough meat. Yes, you can eat eggs and try to eat lower fat meats. So if you're thinking about eating five strips of bacon, maybe bring that down to two. You could switch to turkey bacon. Turkey is a very low fat meat. We have fats. Your body does need fats in order to produce testosterone because a lot of hormones are produced in your liver. Those hormones are produced from fats. And you can make a better choice with your fats by sticking to olive oil, canola oil, avoiding vegetable oils, avoiding hydrogenated oils, which is used in almost every single sort of pastry thing that you might buy in a package, and avoiding saturated fat, which is animal fats like butter. Excuse me. Okay, so now I have some food. Let's take a look at this food and see what's inside. So here, I got a piece of a white bread. I'll, I'll pull up my little food app, which is my plate. I do recommend this app. I'm not getting paid to advertise this app. I think it's useful. When you're using a calorie counting app, I think you need to be a little bit weary of the calorie amount. Because like we talked about when we're comparing complex carbs to simple carbs, one slice of white bread and one slice of whole grain bread are both 70 calories, except the effect that they're gonna have on your body is much different. So 3,000 carbs of white bread and 3,000 carbs of whole grain bread are gonna do very different things to your body. Okay, so here's a slice of white bread. Not really a lot, not really a lot of protein, and it's all simple sugars. Simple sugars. Yeah, it tastes good, but here, I got a chicken burger and it's fried. Ooh, I'm not doing so good, am I? <laughs> White bread on the bun, and it's fried chicken, which means that it's gonna have a much higher con fat content, which, and it's probably not the kind of fats that we want. Okay, and I'll post the thing up there. And here I have got basically an Alfredo pasta with chicken and some vegetables. So what's good about this? The good things about this is the broccoli, the vegetables, and it's grilled chicken. The Alfredo pasta has a ton of saturated fat in it and fat. What I could do to make this meal better and actually make this an extraordinarily healthy meal would just to be to exchange the white pasta for whole grain pasta. I could do the same for my baguette and same thing for the hamburger bun. For the hamburger, I could make this a pretty decent choice if instead of a fried chicken sandwich, it was a grilled chicken sandwich. That would take a lot of the fat and the oils out of it, and that would make it good. I'm doing good with my choice of drink. I'm having water, which has zero calories, and your body needs water, not soda. 
and I'm not eating any sweets with this. So overall, this is not a, a horrible choice, but it's not the best choice for the reasons I explained. I need to eat, I haven't eaten all day and it's 4 p.m. So let me eat. Let's take a look at what's going on with this nutrition label. Because although there's definitely a lot of calories in this Alfredo pasta, it doesn't tell the whole story of what's going on nutrition wise. So we're gonna take a look at the fat first, which is 80 grams of fat. Saturated fat is way over what we're supposed to get in a day. And you can tell that that's a lot of cholesterol. The saturated fat is coming from the intense amount of butter and cheese in the Alfredo pasta. So if you're going to read a label like this, you want to kind of use the daily recommended percentages against what you're eating currently. And could you eat what you're eating three times in a day? So if I had three of these chicken Alfredo pastas, I'd be eating something like 750% of my daily recommended intake of saturated fat, which is obviously way too much. In terms of sodio and carbs, it's doing okay. And it has a little bit of fiber. We can take a look at the micronutrients, which is basically the vitamins and minerals, but this isn't going to give us an, an entire look of what we need in a day. Instead, it's going to be much easier to take a look at our reference meal on myplate.gov, which one quarter should be fresh vegetables and one quarter should be fresh fruits. It's much easier to eat that amount of fruits and vegetables than it is to try to count every single kind of vitamin and mineral in our diet. That's really a lot of work, but it is much easier just to eat more fruits and vegetables. And the more variety of vegetables and fruits that you can eat, the better off you are. You should focus on dark leafy greens and dark colored vegetables that have the most amount of nutrients in them, as opposed to iceberg lettuce and uh, things like celery. Here's an example of a nutrition label. The first thing we need to pay attention to is the serving size. A lot of food companies will make the container multiple serving sizes. So it's a way of misleading you into thinking that whatever you're eating is less than what it is. Here in this case, they've done an honest representation of what we're actually eating. One sandwich is the serving size, um, except let's take a look what's inside it. So let's start off with the fat. It's 22 grams of fat, which won't kill us, except it's 60% of our saturated fat. So if we were gonna eat this, we would wanna make sure that this is pretty much the only kind of saturated fat we're gonna eat throughout the day. The uh, rest of our choices need to be a lot less on fat. The sodium, again, it's pretty high at 43%. So if we're gonna eat three of these sandwiches in a day, we would be over our daily recommended intake of saturated fat. For the carbs, it is 37 grams of carbs and only two grams of fiber. So because the fiber content is so low, this is probably not whole grain bread. And we can see that on the right here, if we look, it's enriched wheat flour. Wheat flour is not whole weight flour. In the ingredient list, it has to say whole wheat or whole grain flour in order for it to be whole grain. Sugars, it's low in sugar, but it's meat. It's not gonna have a lot of sugar and 21 grams of protein, which is pretty decent. Here is a prepackaged meal that my cousin is eating, and you can tell that it has a very large amount of fat. It is 59 grams of fat, which is uh, almost your entire day's worth of fat intake, and it has almost 20 grams of saturated fat, which is um, you know, probably close to 80% of what you should be eating in terms of your fat, saturated fat. Pork is usually not a great choice because it's not a lean meat and chicken, turkey, fish are going to be better options for eating. And I don't like this label because it doesn't really include how much of uh, these ingredients are in terms of your daily recommended intake. Here is a Twinkie, and let's pay attention to a couple things here. The first one is enriched bleached wheat flour. If it's bleached, if it's enriched, enriched, excuse me, it means it's not whole grain. This is white flour, which means it's a simple carb, and it's not what we want to eat. 
Um, you can pretty much ignore the vitamins. Those are not bioavailable typically in terms of a food like this. It doesn't do anything for you. They just add that there to because it's required by law. The sugar, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, it's all sugar. High fructose corn syrup is just a cheap sugar that that's made from corn. The thing we really want to look out for is the hydrogenated vegetable oil. That is not going to be good for us. That is going to cause inflammation and it's just generally bad for our cholesterol. So anything you see with hydrogenated vegetable oil like this is just something you can cross off the list. The fad thing is, is superfood a real thing or is that just marketing lingo? Is there, any, is there really such a thing as a superfood? Totally food? marketing. Okay. And Pauline, thank you. That was all the questions I could think of and more. I became a registered nurse in 1980. Uh, as part of that, I studied nutrition, studied anatomy and physiology, uh, which means, and then I also studied pathophysiology, meaning disease processes. And so, and then I've always been fascinated by it. So I've done additional study over the years, uh, tons of additional continuing education because that's required. Mid 1990s, I went back to school, got my bachelor's as the stepping stone to getting my master's. So I got my master's in nursing in 2006. And then in 2007, I received my certification as a family nurse practitioner as well. I'm still a certified family nurse practitioner. I'm still license i just got recertified in june of this year thank you aunt pauline it's great to have such a wealth of experience i the studies and off the hip too that's pretty amazing there's no way i could do that especially that early in the morning <laughs> i'm not a morning person <laughs> oh. <laughs> my, my absolute pleasure i love i love uh, to know how our body works. I love the sciences and I love to teach. So it all combines all of my loves. So, and I love you. So, oh, thank you, Aunt Pauline. It's my <laughs> bedtime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go to bed there, Kyle. Thank you so much. Next time, let's get on the phone and we'll talk about, um, you know, more family stuff too. Okay. That's great. Thanks for your time, Aunt Pauline. Great to see you. Great to see you too. Okay, love you. Love you too. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. bye for now. Bye-bye. Shout out to my Aunt Pauline. Thank you for letting us borrow on your expertise and your medical knowledge to help make this video as accurate as possible to give sound nutritional advice and to make sure people out there are getting the things in their body that they really need. Thank you so much. If you want to watch the full interview of Aunt Pauline and I, Check it out only on my Patreon page. It was a very long interview and I cannot fit the whole thing into this video. That's all she wrote. I hope you enjoyed this interview with my awesome Aunt Pauline. Let's give it, let's say thank you to her for making time out of her very busy schedule to answer my all of our questions. And you gotta you gotta give her some props because she didn't really have any time to prepare for this. I literally was messaging her those questions while we were asleep. So she pretty much just woke up and answered this long list of questions. Believe it or not, it took a lot to set this episode up. A lot of research, a lot of background, a lot of material making went into this. If you like this episode, please subscribe to the channel and check out our Discord. Our Discord, Gym Rats. I'm tired, man. It's my bedtime. I I skipped going out drinking tonight for this episode because it was worth it to me. This was more important to me than going out drinking with some girls that might just be in it for my money. Not like I got a lot of that. Any <laughs> Check out Gym Rats. Check it out. We're growing. We already got nine people. That's offline. We got more than that. We got who knows? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That one is also me. Got eleven people in this in this bad boy. We just opened this up last week. So come on in. Join us here at Gym Rats. Keep track of your nutrition. Post your workouts. People are posting a workout. That's my sister Nikki. Remember, don't say anything weird. If you wouldn't say it in front of your sister. Don't say it in front of mine, please. <laughs> so, 
keep that in mind when you're here. Posting workouts. A lot of this stuff is good things that you would want if you're looking to get into shape. Showing different variations of different workouts. You can see me doing some of these workouts and other people. Here's one of our other members. Check it out. She's got an awesome Romania deadlift. Look at her form. Crazy good. Awesome arch in her lower back. Great positioning. Barbells close to her shins. Look at that. Nice stuff. People are posting their workouts in here. You can see what's going on. You can post your own workouts. Get free feedback on your workouts. Oh man, do I used to charge people $200 a month for that? And you could get a you got to be early, right? Because that's going to fill up quick. But you can get some good advice for free on your workouts. And I got a couple very experienced weightlifters in this Discord that are looking to give back to the community. There's a lot of people with a lot of experience in here that want to help out. What Gym Rats really is, is a support system. That's what it's about. It's a support system to help you keep on track. So if you want to join, this is how you do it. One, click the link in the description. You're going to get brought to our gym rat mission statement. Take a look at it. Read it. And I'm sure you like it. It's a home. We're a family. Please treat us that way. We want you here. And we have some values that we're going to do our best for ourselves and help other people along the way. Take our pledge. You're going to hope that you want to be a part of our community, that you want to help other people, and that you want to crush your goals. Click this little dude right here to gain access to the community. You'll get here, and this is what you're going to see. Click this little dude to gain access to the community. And when you accept our pledge and you say and you promise us that you're going to be a part of our community, you're going to be good to us, and you're going to play your part, and you're going to be a team player, you are a full-fledged member of gym rats. You're a full-fledged gym rat. Head on down to the icebreaker. Let us know about who you are. Tell us what you're interested in. You can assign some, some tags on yourself. Tell us what you like. I like to lift weights. I like swimming. And I'm a foodie. Maybe some wrestling here and there. With a little bit of kickboxing. This ice cream doesn't do anything. You know, we have some leaders in this Discord. My buddy Malin, he's been a weightlifter for quite a number of years, along with myself. Dinosaurus Rex, this dude is yoked out of his mind, and he's a great coach. Along with my buddy Pencho, who was my first fitness client four years ago now, and he's looking to give back to the, to the fitness community and help people get their goals on lock. Thank you. Have a nice day.